Welcome, I'm Carrie Jeter, and this is the Freedom Sisters Podcast, a show where my sisters in service talk about her life journey, from hardships to victories and everything in between. We are the leading media company to amplify women veterans. Well, hello, hello, hello. I hope you all enjoy that new intro and you are just as excited as I am to be at the beginning of year two of the Freedom Sisters podcast. This is your host, Carrie Jeter, and I'm just so glad that you have joined us today and are on this journey with us because it's been really incredible. Today, you're in for a real treat because we always talk to women veterans on this show, but I have one particular man that I adore and he is also a veteran. And if you go back to episode one, you get to hear a beautiful conversation that lays the foundation for year one between Marcellus Jeter and myself. And that would be my husband who is absolutely incredibly supportive and has been behind, beside, in front of, um, lifting me up at times, encouraging me forward at times, and um, pulling me back at times when I'm running too fast. And, you know, you can't really, we talk about success in this um, episode a little bit, and you really can't be successful unless you surround yourself with people who are going to hold you accountable and responsible. And I don't touch on that when we're talking, but as I'm you know, loving on him a little bit right now. Like, I just really feel like you have to have a good partner, whether that's in marriage or in business or a good friend or a sister or a brother or a mother, somebody who's going to support you. That is incredibly worth its weight in gold. So he just, he's all business, y'all. It's so fun. He is a fun dude, but he is all business. And when he has a task at hand, He does an incredible job. And so he jumps right into hard conversation, tough, tough questions. It's a fun conversation. And um, I really hope you enjoy it. And I hope you all stick around for all the amazing things we have coming up for our community. I really believe, y'all, at the bottom of my heart that we are we are this is truth right here this is fact we are the first women veteran owned media company that only talks about women veterans we are the leading company to um, share your stories your personal stories and then also market and help your businesses and encourage you as entrepreneurs and all the things we are here for you so i've refined our slogan a little bit i've really sharpened um, our messaging and things like that. And so really, yeah, we are here. Everything we do, we exist to be a catalyst for women veterans. We see you, we hear you, and we know you. And we are here to amplify women veterans. And I'm just so here for it. And I know you're here for it too. This community has grown exceptionally fast. And I just am humbled and blessed and beyond encourage to continue to stay in the fight, to continue to help share your stories, to continue to give you voice, to continue to give you space. Um, And we've got a lot coming up in 2021. And y'all, we ain't going anywhere. There is so much room for growth in what we're doing that we're not going anywhere. We have a constant revolving invitation. If you want to be a guest on the Freedom Sisters podcast, Go to our website, freedomsisters.com, go to the podcast page, and there's a button on there that says, be a guest, be our guest, and click it and fill that form out. And when I open up interview times, you get an invitation, and then you get to pick a time slot that works for you. Because again, this is all about you. We're here for women veterans, and it's really incredible. So without further ado, y'all, let's just get into the show because- I'm so excited to talk about what we, to share what we talk about. So thank you for your support this year. Happy freaking birthday and uh, let's go. Hello, everyone. 
This is Marcellus Jeter, and I'm sitting here with Carrie Jeter, the founder and CEO of Freedom Sisters, and my beautiful wife. Oh, are you sweet? <laughs> anyway, it's been a year already, man. Congratulations. Uh, a year has flown by. It has flown by. Yeah, just seems like yesterday we were recording your first episode. And here we are a year later doing your year anniversary recording. So I'm sure everybody's anxious to hear. So we're going to jump right into these questions. Are you ready? Ready. All right. The first question we have for you is how do you think this podcast has helped the women veteran community? Well, yeah. Well, hey, you're heavy hitter right out the gate there, babe. Way to go. Um, I really think that the podcast has helped women um, in their healing journey. It's been a real delight to sit and watch as we're having the conversations, you know, just the either the light coming on or the light shining through these women as they're telling their stories. And as I'm asking them the questions and making them reflect and think and ponder of their life and how has how had how their journey has been affected and where they've come from and where they are now. And it's just been a really cool thing. Um, and so to watch her personal journey of healing begin, continue, has been really incredible for the individual women that come on the show. But the other thing that's really cool, and I know is like really connecting women veterans, is this sisterhood. Like there's this constant thread of hope and healing and sisterhood in every conversation, the reviews that we get, the the conversations I'm having off the mic are just really inspiring, um, you know, and ultimately I think it, for the women veteran community, this is a solid strand of hope that we are being seen, we are being heard, we are being known, and we're able to build this community better than it is today and we'll continue to grow from there. That's it. Freedom Sisters as a startup company, how do you think, or how was the first year of business for you? Wow. Well, the first year of business, I would categorize, if I could sum it up in one word, it would be wild. Absolutely wild, but wildly good, wildly hard, wildly quick. We learned to shift really rapidly, actually, because, you know, we started in November and went what, about four months, I guess, until COVID started to hit and we were planning this live event and all those things. And so, yeah, we had a shift, but we also learned how to sift out advice. Like people were coming and saying, hey, I think you need to do this for your business. Hey, I think you need to go this direction or that direction. And while everyone had good intentions, they were, it was almost like stressing me out. It was, it was like, okay, well, I'll try that and I'll listen to what they're saying and try it for a little bit. Um, but then what I realized is like, that's not what God had called me to do. That wasn't my, that wasn't my path forward. And so I was able to sift out the advice and hear what they had to say, see if it applied. And then, uh, that was one of the main lessons that I learned is really what applied to my vision, the resourcefulness, the creativity that are in all of us is really unlimited and it's unlimited in myself. It's unlimited to you. Who's listening to this right now. Um, yeah, I think, I think it's just been a wild, a wild year, but it's been so good. And speaking of wild year, it's been quite the busy year for you. I know. Cause I had the kids all the time. <laughs> yes. Um, but you can't do it without the team. Speaking of, you know, being a busy year, the busy year that you had, what would you, would you like to recap and give us highlights on what happened this year? Yeah, I think that's actually kind of fun to think about all of the milestones that we hit. Um, so we launched 11-11, right, on Veterans Day 2019, fell on a Monday. And so that's why we launch all of our episodes come out on a Monday, because I wanted it to be significant for the community. And Veterans Day obviously is a huge day for us um, who served. And so 52 episodes we recorded and produced and launched. We, um, by January, I felt I had all the tech stuff down. So although I knew how to interview folks because I 
you know, a qualified PAO, and I've done this for some time with the media, I didn't do the tech element. So I had to learn how to do broadcasting, basically, that I think the veteran community as a whole, the military has potentially set us up really successfully because you get a problem, you get under-resourced all the time in the military, and you still have to accomplish the mission. So there's a problem and you need to solve it. And I really feel like I've applied that to this and, but by January, I felt like I had the tech stuff down. And then March was a really big month for us. That was really cool, actually. The Women Warriors Living Legacy series, where we interviewed a World War II veteran all the way through a post 9-11 veteran. And we also had every branch of service represented in that as well. So it was really, that was really cool. So we interviewed five different eras of women who had served. That was fantastic. June, we gave away a wedding dress to a woman veteran out of North Carolina. That was Aunt Connie. She and Anna Maria Bridal wanted to do a giveaway for a women veteran, and that was really fun. In July, we hosted our first live event, and that was supposed to be an in-person event. Again, hashtag quarantine, COVID, whatever you want to say. 2020, everyone talks about it's been a crazy year. Yes, but we had our first live event, and that was Shiro Talk. So that is Shelly Willis and I's little baby. And that isn't just for women veterans, that's for all women, but we do give back to a women veteran nonprofit. This year we were able to give $625 to a women veteran led nonprofit called Final Salute. And then also in Jan in July, we did our first like, I'd say official prayer day, uh, prayer event. We prayed for an hour for ending child sex trafficking, right? There was a bunch of military mamas that got together in the morning and it was super early, but it was great. And what had happened as a result of that was invited into these other areas to pray or to help with spiritual healing and all of that. And that was cool. So then August came around, we were, we were supporting Vanessa Guillen and the plight for justice for military sexual trauma survivors. And we did a bunch of rallies. We produced a rally. We produced a whole event for her birthday, actually. And that was in September. But also in August, we started to begin to diversify our media. So we started our YouTube channel in August. And then in September, we produced the Vanessa Guillen Celebration of Life event on her birthday. That was crazy successful. And leading up to that, we had over 5,000 views of the video, our candle video, like leading up to that. So that was pretty incredible as well. And then October, um, I did a call to action. I did one call to action for writers for the next project that we have launching here soon, which we're going to get into. And now here we are. By November, we were 100% full for everything that we've got going on for next year, all our plan, everything. It's full. It's great. It's just really incredible to see. So um, yeah, I guess if I was to do it even more simplified, we had for all of the military, you know, we love it for the numbers, by the numbers. So we had 52 episodes, two productions, three publications. We leveled up to an LLC. We created two more levels of media. We launched, we did two classes to the podcast community on how to interview. I learned so much and I enjoyed the ride so, so much. And I was also invited on six other podcasts to share our story and be a guest on those shows. And you can find all of that uh, outward media on our website at freedomsisters.com. So that's the year in a nutshell. And you designed the shirt, didn't you? Yeah, so we also launched merch. Thanks, babe. Yeah, we launched merch. So um, the logo I created a while ago and the design, the shirt that we just launched with Verb United, that is a shirt that I created as well. So yeah, lots of good stuff happening. Yeah, what a busy year. Well, someone is listening in today. Excuse me, maybe have an idea of contemplating a business of their own. What tip or advice would you give to that person? I would say if you have something in your heart that you just really feel prompted to do, 
like start planning, start with what you have. You can always start with what you have and then you level up to what you need and then level up to what you want. And you'll see as you get into what you feel like you're being called to that when you just begin, so much opens up and then you start to get comfortable. You don't have to be scared. Um, definitely, I would say don't be afraid of failure because there's so much you can learn from stumbling um, because you can't like, what, I don't know, you miss a day, you forget an episode, like if you want to go into podcasting, like, right? Like yeah. there's not anything life threatening by trying to start something new. Like we've been through hard things. You could do hard things. Just start with what you have. And I've also learned as you're growing and you're learning to, to lean into that flex space, like think bigger than what you're doing when you start and then how you can grow. So I say go for it and just, just do it. You definitely have to be flexible, especially when it comes to recording, moving things around. Looking in, you appear to be successful, accomplishing goals. How do you define success? Yeah, I think accomplishing goals is only one part of success. When creativity is involved and it solves a problem, I think that is successful. I think when you come to a challenge and you find the solution for it, that's success. Um, when you've helped somebody, that is a form of success too. So I feel like each week there's been successes, little successes. Um, when a woman opens up about a problem she's having that I obviously, you can only do so much research on somebody, but then they open up and they share something with you. Mm -hmm. That's success to me. And I also think when you give others an opportunity, that is also a success. And something that has recently a, a remark, a review that I got or whatever, one of our writers, she was like, thank you for dreaming big enough so others could fulfill their dreams too. And I just think that that right there is such a beautiful compliment. Like it was almost teary eyed and it was just like, wow, you know, you never know, you never know what your dream is going to do for somebody else. And I think when you can give somebody else an opportunity, that's success and you don't have to make a bajillion dollars like we're not rolling in the dough over here at freedom sisters you know but we are successful because we are changing lives and helping other people that's awesome i think it's also uh it's how should i say rewarding for the individual too because the individual is telling you their story but they're getting that off their chest telling it to somebody so that's awesome <clears throat> Kind of a second part to that with my next question is, how do you lay out your yearly goals? So I, what I like to call vision casting. Um, I want to, I dream big. I think about what it is I want to do. Um, I really have to thank my dad, I think, for this dreamer gene that I have, because even as a little girl, he would have us like create we were the Higgins company, t-shirt company, you know, and we would draw all the time and create designs and all of that stuff. And so I still think that that's really an important step to planning and, and seeing where you're going to go is vision cast. Tell yourself what you want to do, write it down, put it on a board. Um, and I did both. I wrote um, for 90 days. I wrote what I wanted my goals to be for the year, the same goals, like they had already been accomplished for the last 90 days of 2019. That's what I did for 2020 to prepare for 2020. And then I also created a vision board, but in that, then I took the big dream, right? And then I pulled out my army training and I created an annual calendar of what I wanted to do by the month, by the week, by theme, by important dates and all of that. Um, and then I planned the whole year. So I knew where I was going the entire time, regardless of any hiccups or any curveballs that might have gotten thrown at me. But because I knew where I was going, I was able to do that 30, 60, 90 day and backwards planning the whole time. It was critical. It's critical, I think. And I taught this class. I had a, a planning class already at the beginning of October because the last 90 days of the year, you should really be looking at the next year ahead, right? 
And so that's what I'm doing right now is currently is looking at that future year. And so to be successful, you have to plan it out, but also be adaptable and flexible when things go one way or the other. But if you have a good solid plan to begin with, those adjustments are minor. It's not, it's not crazy or overly stressful. Right. So speaking of planning forward, <clears throat> it's good to look back as you plan forward. But you mentioned all the numbers and all the things you did last year. And it's like, man, what else can you come up with? So can you share with your listeners what's next for Freedom Sisters? And why is the magazine the next right thing? The magazine is the next right thing because we lack a tool like this in our community. And as a media content creating company, I feel it's very critical to share stories, build up our sisters, highlight products, ideas, policies that are for women veterans. We need to assess the situation, help make well-informed decisions, advise our community, communicate to the public about women and their genius and what they're doing who would serve this country. Like they are just as important in uniform as they are out of uniform. And I just think that we need to plan and execute a communication strategy and evaluate, analyze, anticipate, assess, and meet, you know, news and information together for the needs of our sisters. So to create the information for print, and I think it's just critical to what we're doing. Um, you mentioned your relationship with God and how that inspired you to start this podcast. So tell us how your relationship with God has changed as a result of your work you're doing. Wow. Yeah, for sure. There has been so much that I have learned by saying yes. So I, I have a rhythm, you know, I get up, the alarm goes off three times, which I know you love. And love the it. first time it's like, I'm checking in with myself. I'm checking in with my energy level. And I'm checking in with how I'm feeling for the day, all of that. Then the next time the alarm goes off, I'm praying or I'm getting up and I'm reading my Bible, going, I'm either sitting in the bed and praying or I'm going away to pray. And I just really have learned how to grow and listening and and saying yes to prompts that I know aren't of just my brain, but actually coming from my heart, coming from that inner place. Um, and so that's what I've learned the most. I think I've grown deeper in my prayer life this year and really just like being able to analyze what's going on and anticipate what, what is gonna come next, right? And stand in that anticipation, like he's telling me, like, I feel like God's impressioning this upon me and then anticipating if I can come up with the solution or if he's going to present a solution. And I've been, um, yeah, really, really in tuned with that, with my prayer life and listening to what he has to say and just being really clear with, with my visions um, and truly trusting him. It's been, it's been probably the wildest thing about this last year, I think. And all of my ideas literally are coming out of dreams. And that might sound really funny to people, mm -hmm. but I end my day too, just like open hands, open heart, praying the, to close out my day. And if I'm struggling with something, like I'm just laying that at like, I would say, it and try it. Maybe it will work for you too. But I just literally say like, God, I feel like there I'm, I'm almost at a solution. Like I just, what is it that you're wanting? You know, and Shiro talk came out of that. You know, the magazine came out of that. And there's a lot that's in my brain. There's a lot that's in my heart that's yet to come. Um, some book ideas, some art ideas and other things like that. And I know that those will come to fruition because other doors are opening. So while there's a lot going on for the company, there's also a lot going on personally that will also be impactful for our community by listening to what God has to say. Awesome. Well, this last question I have is for you. Is, is there anything that you would like to add? Yeah. So pro tip, everyone, if you ever get asked this question in an interview, you always have something else to add. So always add value when you can. So say yes. And I've got one more thing um, coming. You know, Freedom Sisters offers 
media relations services as well. And I can help you prep for an interview. I can help you become a better interviewer. I can coach podcasters on interviewing skills. I can write press releases, which I also did this year for a bunch of different women. I can edit video. I can help you with the production. So if you are in business and you need help creating content, Freedom Sisters can also do those things for you. In addition to our weekly podcast, in addition to our monthly magazine, we are really here to help women, veterans, and business nonprofits succeed in their next mission. So, you know, we've got the podcast, we've got the magazine, we have a TV show in the works. So we just got lots happening here, but we would love to help you and help our sisters shine. Be seen, be known, be heard, amplify women veterans. You're going to hear that a lot more um, because we have refined and fine-tuned our slogan, I guess mm -hmm. you could say. So you've been in every show with the final three questions. And those questions have been, what's your favorite Bible verse? Give a book recommendation. Um, what advice would you give a young person or excuse me, a young woman joining the military? Yeah, so those have been our three final questions for year one. And I have come up with three new questions because I think we need to shake things up a little bit. And although I have really thoroughly enjoyed hearing the Bible verses and the advice, I think there's ways and selfishly, I was asking the book recommendations because I love to read, but I think there's still ways I could ask that throughout a conversation if it's important to the conversation. But um yeah, so we're shaking it up and we have three new questions. Da, 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 da. And they are, okay, podcast recommendation. Right, so I have three to share with you because I love podcasts. I guess you can't really be a podcaster without loving podcasts, but um, three that I am loving right now are Behind the Service. It's a trio of military spouses who are really loving on the caregiver community and military spouses and veterans. And it's incredible. They have a wealth of knowledge and some really cool guests on their show. And then Command Your Life is a fellow sister veteran podcast. And her podcast comes out the gate just strong and amazing. And it's incredible. I love that one as well. And then That Sounds Fun podcast. It's a Christian podcast based podcast. Um, Annie F. Downs does a really good job. Um, she talks to everyone from like political activists to Christian songwriters to whomever. And it's so incredibly amazing. I really like her podcast. She's my online mentor, I would call, I would say. <laughs> All right. And what's the mo most important way to nurture your faith? So for me, um, nurturing my faith, and I've kind of tipped on this a little bit ago, but really it's that prayer piece has been the biggest thing for me. And to ask questions, um, investigate what scripture says, because sometimes things that we've been taught are exactly the way that the Bible actually says. And so I think it's really important Um it's always, I feel like it's better to be in a question mode, not like you're questioning God, but you're questioning what others have told you about him and to investigate it for yourself is like critical. So you got to get in the word and you got to pray because that's how you hear from him. All right. And question three, <clears throat> what was the greatest impact your service had on your life? So for me personally, I really think, that serving in the army has impacted my life because I'm able to adapt to hardships. And when I'm presented with a challenge or when I want to challenge myself, like I know like I've been through a lot and I can do more. Like you can push beyond the limits. And sometimes when you feel like you're literally, you know, you've been ruck marching forever and you feel like you're never going to get to the end and then you keep pushing through and then you do it. And then guess what? In two weeks for certain training, you have to do a longer one, right? And so there, it's like the army was always constantly pushing you to that limit and then pushing you beyond what you thought you were capable of. And so I think that's what the army has set me up for, for success in what I'm doing now. Well, thank you. That's going to wrap up this episode. I want to say congratulations on your first year. 
and hope I hope your second year is just as successful as your first year was. Hope you've been able to manage a little more of your time and not get so stressed out. But just keep your dedication and you'll be fine. Well, I guess I couldn't do any of what I'm doing, honestly, if I didn't have such a good support at home. And so that's critical to this. And, you know, right here in this moment, like even coming on at, you know, we're recording super late at night after the kids go to bed. Like we just really I really value that you're a great team teammate and partner um, in life and supporting supporting myself and you know all your fellow sisters in service babe so <laughs> it's great i really appreciate you if you enjoyed this show please be sure to subscribe so you never miss an episode rate and review this podcast and share with your friends until next time be seen be heard be known amplify women veterans